In the last video, we started with the basics of Tinkercad. In this video, we will learn about breadboards and how to use breadboards to implement circuits on breadboards. Let's get started. I have already created a new circuit. You can search for breadboard in the components palette. Three types of breadboards are available in Tinkercad, namely the Breadboard Mini Breadboard Small Breadboard A breadboard is a rectangular piece of plastic with a grid of holes that allows you to easily and quickly build electronic circuits by pushing electronic components into the holes. Technically, breadboards are called as solderless breadboards because they can make electrical connections without using solder or melted metal to permanently bond electronic components together. Let's consider a breadboard and take a closer look at the different labels on it. Your breadboard has columns A through J and rows that start with 1 and go up to a number that depends upon the size of the breadboard. These labels make it easy to follow the directions when building a circuit. For example, a hole C12 is where column C intersects with row 12. There are also long strips on either side of your breadboard that are usually labeled with red and black color or red and blue lines and also have a plus and minus sign. These are usually called buses or rails and are used to deliver power to your entire circuit. Typically, the red one marked with a plus sign will connect to the positive battery terminal, and the black or blue marked with a minus sign will connect to the negative battery terminal. To use a breadboard, it's important to understand how the holes are connected. Let's take a look at hole A1 as an example. Remember that inside the breadboard, there are sets of 5 metal clips. This means hole A1 is electrically connected to hole B1, C1, D1, and E1. It is not connected to the hole A2 because that hole is in another row and does not share the same set of metal clips. It is also not connected to any other hole on the other side due to the gap in the middle of the breadboard. If you hover your mouse over any hole, you can find the set of interconnected holes that are highlighted with green lines. The power rails run vertically on the sides of the breadboard and are typically connected over more than 5 holes, although this can vary from breadboard to breadboard. The individual power buses are not connected. Let's take a look at what all this means for a common demonstration circuit with a battery, resistor, and LED. When the battery pack is turned on the LED lights up, pretty simple. Let's see how this circuit is implemented on the breadboard. The battery pack's positive terminal or red lead is connected to the power bus on the right side of the breadboard. This is connected through a jumper wire to row 5 which then goes to the LED, over to row 5 on the other side, to a resistor, to the ground bus, and then to the battery pack's negative terminal or black lead. This circuit shows how the current flows through the circuit using black arrows. This is called a closed circuit or a complete path of electricity to flow. Remember, all the holes in row 5 are electrically connected. This means I can move the LED to different holes in row 5 and it will still light up. However, if I move the LED to a completely different row such as row 4 or row 6, the LED will not light up as there is no path for electricity to flow. The above circuit can be reconfigured as shown here. This looks different than the previous circuit, however electrically it is the same circuit so the LED still lights up. You can trace the flow of current by following the black arrows. You can notice there is still a closed path for the flow of electricity through the LED. Finally, all this time you might have been wondering what this gap that goes in the middle of the breadboard is for. This gap is designed such that integrated circuits are more often called chips that come in dual inline package meaning they have two rows of pins can fit nicely in the middle of the breadboard as shown here. This works great because now the pins on each side of the chip are now connected to their own row. What you don't want to do is put the entire chip on either side of the breadboard. If you put the chip like this then you are shorting the two pins in a row. This might damage your chip. That's it for now. Here are a few questions to test your understanding of using the breadboard properly. You can put answers in the comments section at the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please share this video if you have enjoyed it. Thank you. See you soon. Kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel if not subscribed already and press the bell icon to receive the latest updates.